so many fish! There was one this size! Yeah, there was actually one this size. Seriously? Yeah, there's one this size. Seriously? Looks like mangoes. Wow. Yeah. She might have got us on this side. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mitch? Yeah. Hi. Right. Good to meet you finally. Yes. So how do you find the door? <laughs> does it lock? It does. <laughs> wow. That's great. Yeah. It's just a big piece of glass. Yes. Yeah. As the architect said, after the house was built, I asked, you forgot, I asked where the handle was. Yeah. And Craig said, a door without a handle is art. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's not the most, if it was brighter that you could see better, but the idea is you just see straight out to the coastline. One of the very few directions I gave the architect was that we had to have an atrium because I saw his other house that he built and I told Craig, if I ever lived in that house, I would spend all my time in the atrium. So he built this house around the atrium, which is a square. And then you have the circle of the house. And then you have the triangle, which also looks like a D-fin, surfboard fin, which is the office upstairs. If you want to picture the cat, you have to do it right this side. Okay, okay. There she goes. She's going to the, go to the left. <laughs> I see it. Where is she? Went to the right. Oh, she's coming. Oh, she's going to go outside. <laughs> and the idea here is to really maximize the view. So this is... Um, K Lakua Bay, down there is Two Step Beach, so we can always see how the water is chopping at the beach. And these are papaya trees here, these, these tall ones are papaya trees. So it's sort of the light green is papaya, and the other is uh, mango. We sell our fruit through the local grocery stores. Here there's a lot of small farms. We, we have six acres here. And it's, you know, it's it, not everyone's a farmer here. There's people who just live here. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be a farmer, but you chose to. Yeah, no, I'm because, I mean, first of all, you got this land. Why put it to waste? Yeah. Okay. And there is a huge issue on the island. Only 10% of our food is local. 90% of the food is either flown in or, or boated in. Okay. And so there's a real issue about getting more sustainability on island. So in here you really see how how round the house is. Right. I'm yes. curious why round? Why is that? For two reasons. One is just to maximize the view. Just to not have corners interfere with enjoying this panoramic view. And I think secondly it was a novelty. It was something different. This is farming country. And so most of the people who engage an architect, I wouldn't call them cookie cutter, but they're pretty, they're traditional. But most people don't build like this. But most people don't build like this. It was a lot of experimentation. There's, there's no walls, there's no 90 degree angles to sort of interrupt that feeling of openness. That really does contribute to the sense of openness. And, and so the circle, the round nature of the house is not just a novelty. It's really got a function. It's just, even if you're here, like there's just no walls in this part, right? So you're just seeing. Yeah. 
you know, it's not a big house, but you get a sense of a, a more grandeur by the openness of it. And the same thing if you come in the bedroom. So this is what I wake up to in the morning. This room does feel almost like you're in an IMAX movie, right? <laughs> I mean, I've it's... never been to an IMAX, so I can't speak to that. But this is really, the color is just vibrant. Yeah, it's a great way to wake up. Wow. Sun's starting to set now. One of the things that I didn't expect, but totally love, just this skylight and the mirror, it's just really lovely. And it just brightens up the whole place. Now this is lava. Here. I was just gonna ask, it looks like it. This is lava, yeah. Wow, and this and the wall and everything too, right? Yes, this is all lava. Sounds here, I'm noticing how different sounds are. I mean, you feel like you're in it, right? Yeah, you... it's wonderful. There's roosters all over this island and there's cokey frogs. I see. And it's amazing. I'm a very light sleeper and I, they don't bother me at all because it becomes part of the rhapsody. Yeah. And I think one of my favorite sounds here is when the rain comes. I love it when the rain comes. It's funny, growing up in California where it didn't rain too much, it was always a hassle. So when I was a kid growing up, rain was something we dreaded, but here we love it. It's just soothing. It makes our work on the farm easier because we have to water less when it rains. We love the rain. This is the one thing that I shipped over from the mainland, the bathtub. I found it on Craigslist in San Francisco, oh, that's great. but it's a great place to take a bath. So instead of people doing outdoor showers, but you have an outdoor bathtub. Well, we have an outdoor <laughs> shower also. Oh, you do? You've got to have an outdoor shower in, in Hawaii. Well, it's raining here, so I don't know if you want, but it's right around the banner. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, we can go up to the office here. Okay, yeah. Oh, wow. So that's the pool. Oh, so you're right in the jungle almost? <laughs> oh, this was all overgrown. We cut down a lot of just wild... St this place hadn't been touched really since 19 the 1930s. We cut a lot. It was just thick. This is a subdivision from an old coffee farm. It was last farmed in 1930. And it had not been tended to for decades. This is the view, that, well, this is the office. This is where the work office. Can you concentrate? I don't do all my work up here, but it's, you know, it, it's a great way to take a break and just take a look. It's so interesting because it's a sliver of a view here. Yeah. And then the other side, it's like funneling your view or I'm... It... Yeah. It is that sense of kind of funneling the light and the energy. Also, to, you know, while that side of the house looks at the bay, you know, I, I just sometimes will get lost in, in enjoying these beautiful trees. And look at this. You got that fir. You got bamboo. These are palms, of course. And you get a sense, really, that you have this curtain of, of vegetation that is protective. It's like a cushion from between the farm and the rest of the world. So it's like a cushion. You don't fence yourself off from the exterior, so you hear things. It's like right, like right now. That's a cokey frog. That's, it's, this is a little early. They usually come out at night. But that chirping sound, the koki, that's why they call it koki, koki. You can hear them, they're, they're starting to yeah. come out. Yeah, no, it is like you do. I mean, and I think that's, again, to why he designed a round house, is he wanted that permeability, the confluence with the nature, you know, just to not feel apart from it. The idea is that this is not a structure that's apart from the land. It's a structure that is with the land. Okay. 
if you look from the front of the house, it's, it's on pillars and it's, it's not stuck in the ground, it's like floating above the ground. That helps with the openness also. It gives you a sense of really being with it, being in nature and in the country, and which is a good thing because it's so beautiful here. This is the lanai, not a very large one, but I've been to places here in Hawaii where the lanai probably is more square feet than the house itself. And people live there, they, they cook, they have a hot plate out there, they have a washing machine out there. So, I'm noticing more and more the roof. It's probably going towards some central point. So. Yes, these beams certainly accentuate that. Yeah. And you can see this beam goes outside. The round nature of the house is not just a novelty. It's really got a function. And I think that's something that was important to me. This is not a vacation home. This is some place where I'm going to be living. So I want it to be very functional. It's not a huge house, so you just have the kitchen, the island, and the table, you know, and it, I, I like the sort of the, you know, you can tell, see some of this is already oxidizing, and, and I think this goes well with it being a farm. It, so you, you get sort of a sense of a modern kitchen, but it's got these little rustic touches, and so that's some, and there's some very cool touches that, you know, this cute little thing here. That's kind of... But there's no distractions. I mean, there's nothing to distract the eye from what's outside. Right, right. But you get that sense of more grandeur than, than the actual square footage because of, of just the openness of it. So let's go up by the pool. Let's do that. You know, I have a black thumb, but, but look, I give all the credit to the soil and to Pele, the, the goddess of the volcanoes. She's blessed me and her, her contribution does not go unnoticed. Whoa, the geometry of this is really cool. Yeah, so you now you add a rectangle to the triangle, the square, and the circle. I sometimes, when I'm doing laps, wonder why did I make it so long? <laughs> so that's what it is, it's, a la it's functional. It's functional, everything, that's the key. You got, the, you got right, it's functional. Right. Frogs are coming up. It's really great. I can't even think of what this shape is. It feels familiar somehow, like some sort of math problem. I don't know, maybe it's one of those aptitude tests where you had to look at something from a different side. Which of the, you know, A, and then one, two, or three, they have the same cube, but they twist it, and you have to, I, maybe that's it, I don't know. I didn't fare too well on those tests, I don't yes. think. So here's the, out, here's the requisite Hawaiian outdoor shower. This is the time of day. If I take a bath, I will take it now. Oh. It's just, you can hear the roosters. This is such a great time of day to take a bath and just lie here and just relax. Oh, wow. So you just try to get outside when you can. I mean, obviously you put the bathtub outside. You're there, that's important. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and also on a very practical level, I try to avoid being out in the middle of the day because, you know, sun, cancer stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're outdoors a lot here. Yeah. And so I try and do my work on the farm early morning and late afternoon. You can see some, these are big mango trees. And then that's my personal garden. We have chard, kale. I grow the best arugula. We're going down to the farm. So it's a long horizontal piece of land. So these are papaya trees, tall, kind of Dr. Susie. Yeah, I like, there. This is a grove of coffee. This is Kona coffee. These are all coffee trees. We just got done picking. I don't know if any of these have any red beans on them or not, but these were planted just three years ago. And look how big they are. This is just a grove. It's about 300 trees in there. We have 300 here. We have another 100. And we expect to get 2,000 pounds of coffee. Wow. Yeah. 
All oh, right. Wow. So Great. after three years, that's impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where we drop coffee. So this is a coffee bean. We've picked it. We've pulped it, which means the outer skin comes off. Okay. And now we have to dry it because moisture has to come. Before you can roast it, we've got a machine that measures the moisture. This is, over here is our cacao. We just did a lot of, I don't know, can you see the red pods in there? See them. Okay, so here's a baby one. Yeah, these are, these are the pods. So when you eat a chocolate candy bar, there's beans inside here. And it's very mucousy. If you open this up, scoop out the beans, and again, like the coffee, you dry it, and then you roast it. Yeah. But, and then what you do depends on, a lot of people make candy bars, we don't really want to make candy bars. It's just not our thing. I mean, I love candy, but I'm not a big sugar guy. So we're thinking about selling cacao powder. And there's, and the plan is to start selling this to chefs at high end restaurants so they can put on the menu, you know, like mahi mahi encrusted in Kona cacao, something like that. Oh, I love it. The Kona name, huh? Yeah. The Kona name. Oh, you can see up there. Those are a bunch of little papayas. Do you see them? Just oh, yeah. Yeah, so those are papayas. These are our Meyer lemons. We, this is our latest clutch of chickens. We have to keep them in the coop because mongooses will attack them if they're too small. So while we're walking to the next part of the farm, I'll tell you the story of mongooses. So there's a big rat problem on the island. And so hundreds of you, I don't know when, 1800s, some fellow had an idea, let's bring mongooses over to kill, to eradicate the rats. So they brought mongooses over. The problem is rats come out at night and mongooses go to bed at night. And there's no natural predator of the mongoose on the island. So we have a huge infestation of mongooses. And, and we can't let the, the chickens out until they attain a certain size. Otherwise, the mongooses will get them. Aloha. This is Landero. Hello. Aloha. This, now, this is a typical lanai. I was telling you the lanai. Oh, yeah. This is a subdivision from an old coffee farm and the soil is amazing. They come over here quickly. Do you see the avocados? Look at these. So this is our mango grove. This was here on the farm, this mango tree. Okay. And you see, we have to top it because we can't reach up that high. So we give it a flat top. These are pineapples. Then we have more coffee down there. Oh, here we go. Again. That's going to grow a little bit more, but it, it, it survived the harvest. Yeah. It's just amazing how abundant. We'll plant little seedlings and they'll say you'll get fruit in three to five years and we got the fruit in two years. It's just the volcanic soil and it's the goddess Pele, who is the goddess of the volcano. This is the coffee. Now these are not, these are green. They're not ready to pick yet, but this will turn red. But like I say, we, we take the raw bean and then we pulp it and we dry it, but we, we don't roast it ourselves yet. Look at this grand old avocado tree. It's been here before I was. Coconut. It, is, it does require a lot of work because there's so many pests. There was something called coffee leaf rust, which rusted the leaves as coffee was wiped out. I, I sold all my coffee last year to a guy who has a coffee house here. This entire crop was, was wiped out. This is a big issue for the island. It's a very expensive place to live. Unfortunately, a lot of people 
can't afford some of the produce. And, and, and coming from California, this is crazy. You know, I used to go to the store and buy a green pepper for 99 cents, and it's $4.99 here. But I also feel good in that we're helping slowly do more farming and growing of food on the island. Do you think that a round home makes sense? And now that you've lived in oh, one. Oh yeah, the, the openness of it, absolutely. It, you, you aren't confined by angles. And there is a very much an openness. And it just makes the whole place flow and more, and I think that contributes to the indoor-outdoor feeling. Now you hear the frogs. When I started coming here, building the house, I stayed with some friends and what did I hear? Cokey frogs and roosters. And I said, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could live on this island. <laughs> but you just, you adapt. It's amazing. You adapt to it. And it's, it's just a harmony. It's, it's not a nuisance at all now. I used to have a problem with chickens coming in the house. And the way I would know that a chicken was in the house is I would be in the other room and I would hear... But that's part of the fun on the farm. It's, you know, live and let live. So I, I'm just blessed to be here. <laughs>